whoever receive uh, an email that would be considered by some to be, uh, you know, uh, the white nationalist uh, flavor from peers or anything? I, w I would think so. I would from have to look through. I have a lot of emails, but yeah, I would think so. That would be an accurate statement. Russell Pierce declaring victory last month after the Supreme Court's SB 1070 ruling. But these emails could turn that victory into defeat. Some of the emails appear to be racially motivated and contain bogus data that may have been used to persuade the governor and other lawmakers to support SB 1070. It is um, not only inappropriate but, uh, but illegal and abusive uh, for a legislature to incorporate in the his policy making functions uh, these uh, discriminatory attitudes. We're talking about children, we're talking about American citizens who've been born in this country, we're, trying to, we're talking about a census that's changed in the last 10 years where Arizona is the fastest, and Latinos are the fastest growing group in the state and to have to deal with this. Some of the Pierce emails included these statements. The United States faces the greatest internal threat to its existence since the Civil War. Do we need to overpopulate ourselves like China, India and Bangladesh? For what reason? It's like ingesting yourself with cancer cells to see what will happen. It's like importing leper colonies and hope we don't catch leprosy. It's like importing thousands of Islamic jihadists and hope they adapt to the American dream. People need to remember that when Russell Pierce was the Senate president, he was thought of and called by many people the most powerful politician in the state. We know that we had a governor that essentially listened, listened and was at the beck and call of Russell Pierce. These kinds of words, this kind of rhetoric is not appropriate for a person who essentially was a de facto leader or the de facto leader of our state. Quote, I'm a racist because I don't want to be taxed to pay for a prison population comprised of mainly Hispanics, Latinos, Mexicans, whatever else you wish to call them. Another one that mentions an article that, quote, warns of an immigrant invasion of the United States from the third world as America's white majority is no longer even reproducing itself. They, they, were, they were emails that I forwarded from a great patriot, a prolific writer, and he used metaphors. He never used racist terms. He never called anybody names. He used metaphors. You know, and yet they would have you believe that these terrible things have been said, simply not true. Russell Pierce, I'm asking you as a Republican to resign from running from the Arizona State Senate. You have a family who loves you. Therefore, with all of your retirements from all of the things you've done in this state, you would still have enough money for you to continue to live as you are now. Do not hurt our state. So you guys talked about race and ethnicity. Oh, of course, yeah. Things like that. Yeah, including, talking, including Mexican jokes, you know, that kind of stuff. I was going to say, did you tell jokes? And yeah. Stuff like that? I'd say, yeah, absolutely. We laughed about jokes right on his, you know, front porch area. It's not really a big porch, but yeah. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And when you look and have an opportunity to read the comments that were discussed in that in those emails by the former Senator Russell Pierce, one of the things again that has to resonate within all of our spirits is he should stay just that the former state Senator Russell Pierce. I was personally offended by a lot of these comments that were stated in these emails that came from Russell Pierce's uh, own pen, from his own mouth. This is absolutely unacceptable. And I call on all of my colleagues in the House to join with, with, with my colleagues in the Senate and to denounce this, to say that this is completely unacceptable and it will not be tolerated here by, by elected officials here in office. Russell Pierce's day has passed. Now we're moving forward. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. They, as leaders, need to stand up. And one of their former colleagues that has this type of, of, of rhetoric they need to speak out on it. And that's what we're saying today. gentleman approached Rep Kazada, who did not say hello and did not introduce who he was, and his statement was, who let you in? Let you in? Uh, Rep Kazada said, the security let us in, and I asked him his name, and he was a Sergeant Trapp, and he said, uh, okay, we have the letter, and put it on a desk, and I asked him, 
Uh, he said the um, Senate president would not, is out of town. So I asked him when he would be back, and he said next week he should get this. And I asked if anyone would read it in his absence, and he said, no, next week the Senate president should get this. Yeah. So how did yeah. that feel when they, they told you? Who let you he in? He was like, standing there. I mean, I, I was surprised. I mean, old person <laughs> and a person. crippled person, and, and he says, who let you in? Like, what are we, you are know? Are you a member of a gang or anything? <laughs> <laughs>